experience your first season in Euroleague. So yeah. how it is so far? Uh, it's going great so far. Um, our team has been improving, uh, especially over the last couple of weeks. I feel uh, we're making some good strides, and um, I think you know we're happy. With, we're happy with with the way we're trending right now. Mm -hmm. And how did you end up in Basconia? What happened? Uh, well, uh, I was a f I played in the NBA last year, and um, I was a free agent this summer. And uh, free agency for NBA started July 1st. So um, after a couple of weeks of talking with NBA teams, there was a little bit of interest, uh, but not the kind of interest that I that I wanted. And you know, no one was really making the kind of commitment to me that I you know I felt. Um, I would need to go somewhere and so uh, I talked with my agent and he said um, you know would you be interested in you know looking to go overseas and you know pursuing those options and I said sure like I would you know like to see you know what what clubs what teams would be interested and then um, uh, Basconia kind of came up pretty quickly in terms of a team that had interest and you know pretty soon I was you know on the phone with uh, with coach Perez and um, yeah, I just kind of started to learn about the organization, their history, and um, you know some of the players they had, like Toko and whatnot. And then I started just getting more and more comfortable with you know making the decision to, to come here. You now have five wins and five losses, but you seem in a good shape, and um, you're close to the top eight teams. Uh, what are your expectations? I think the top eight is something that we could we could definitely do. Um, I feel like both in Euroleague uh, and in, in the ACB, we've you know we've we've lost some games that you know we should have won, and um, w you know we're learning from those mistakes that we've made. And it's a very long season, um, so you know we're we're hoping that we don't continue to make those same mistakes down the road. And we feel that um, if we learn from those, that you know we'll be able to convert those into wins as the course of the season goes on, and we'll be able to take care of business. What are your thoughts about the upcoming game against Panathinaikos? Um, and I guess you know that uh, Rick Pitino is back on the bench. Yes, he's a great, great coach, and um, yeah, I played, I played against Rick Pitino uh, while I was in college in the NCAA. He was coaching at Louisville while I was at Michigan. So I know he's a very respected coach and his players always play very hard. And um, obviously they have uh, a lot of players on their team with a lot of talent and you know some guys with NBA experience as well. Um, so it's going to be a very tough game and obviously the fans here are very passionate as well. I've, ne I've never played here but I've heard you know good things about the fan base here so I'm sure it'll be a, a hostile environment but I think we're ready. You know Panathinaikos has a good shooter too. I'm talking about Jimmer Fridet. Mm -hmm. So if we put you two together in a three-point shot contest, uh, who is going to win? <laughs> I, I always have confidence in myself, so I go with me. But Jimmer's an unbelievable shooter. And um, I actually looked up to him while he was, I was in high school while he was playing college basketball. And uh, I looked at him as a role model, as you know, someone I wanted to play like. So I have a lot of respect for him. Let's go back to your uh, NBA years. Uh, you got drafted uh, by the Sacramento Kings mm -hmm. in 2014. And uh, how was your rookie year? Oh, my rookie year was it was uh, a crazy experience. There's so many, so many new things happening all at one time. I was uh, 20 years old at the time, um, so I didn't really know what to expect, but. The, the the season itself, or you know, the team didn't perform very well, and then uh, we ended up having three coaches that year. There was some of our coaches got fired, so it was a very up and down, up and down year, and it was uh, it was difficult for me. It was a learning experience. Back then, you said uh, something like, um, "I understand that I'm a rookie and I'm white, so people are going to attack me." Did yes. you regret that line? Yeah, I uh, I remember when I said that. Um, definitely a lot of backlash, you know, from people. Um, I didn't mean it in any in any harmful way. I, you know, just more. I think in basketball in general, it's more of a, a stereotype that um, you know a, a lot of guys you know who are white. You know, people think they can't defend very well, so they say, okay, well, I'm going to test him out and I'm going to see if he can guard me. And uh, I just remember, I said that it was after my first like two three games in the NBA, and I just remember that. It felt like every time down the floor, whoever I was guarding got the ball and then they were just going one on one against me. So I was like, man, everyone's always trying to <laughs> score on me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I should have I definitely should have worded it differently at the time. I, re I regret, you know, saying it in that in that phrase because I didn't mean to offend anyone. I also watched the video where you had a contest uh, with uh, Pedro Stoyago. It's a great shooter. Yes. So, did you win back then? I of, course I of course I won. Of course I won. 
but he was retired, so maybe it wasn't completely fair. What do you think is going wrong in, in an organization like San Cremendo? Because, um, I mean, they lost uh, Luka Doncic in the draft. Um, mm -hmm. They say that uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic might leave in uh, the summer. It's a you know interesting question. They've had they've had a rough they've had a rough stretch over the last. I'd say maybe six to eight years, uh, and they've gone through a lot of different players. You know, Demarcus Cousins has, was the star there for a long time, and he was gone. And now they've brought in a younger group with, you know, like you said, Bogdanovich and whatnot. Um, but I, you know, they've showed glimpses of being of being really good. And you know, with the dra with the draft, with missing out on Doncic, it's it's easy to look now and say, oh, look how good he's playing. You should have drafted him. But you know, it's. Um, in the in the moment, it's always hard. Some organizations have their eyes on certain players, and they think certain things about, um, you know, that maybe this guy will be better than this guy. But it's always so hard to tell how it's going to play out in the end. And you know, obviously, Luca, is, uh, unbelievable here in the Euro League. He was um, a superstar at a young age. So I think a lot of people knew it would translate, but. You know, obviously every team has their own opinions with, you know, who they think is going to be the best player. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really blame them. Okay, something else now. What about uh, your nickname, Sos mm -hmm. Castillo? Yes. I, I guess European fans don't know anything about <laughs> it. <laughs> it was my rookie year in Sacramento, and um, it was during a game. I shot a three-pointer and made it. And on TV, the closed captioning, instead of it saying uh, Nick Stauskas with the three-pointer, it said uh, Sauce Castillo with a three-pointer. So there was some mistake, maybe auto-correct or the computer, something happened. But after that game, everyone all of a sudden started just say, okay, you're Sauce Castillo now because of the mistake. You have played also for the national team of Canada mm -hmm. uh, and they are the opponent of Greece in the pre-Olympic tournament. Yes. So what are your thoughts again? You know Rick Pitino is also the coach I, of the Greece. I have heard that now, yes, yes. Um, at this point, I still don't know. I don't know if I'll be playing for Canada this summer. Um, but in the past, when I have played, I've had a lot of fun, and it's been a great experience. Um, obviously, playing in the Olympics would be something that would be uh, would be an honor. It would be a, a very cool experience. So um, I'll probably start considering that more. You know, as the season as it gets later towards the season, the summer gets closer. I've seen you've done some amazing things, like going out in the rain and making it to yeah. 46, I think. Yes. That's in a row. Yeah. And um, you have made shots with different kind of balls, even fruits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is something you haven't done yet? Uh, I guess, uh, man, maybe um, there's maybe probably a lot more fruits and vegetables that I haven't <laughs> tried. Um, but that, I, you know, with that video, I surprised myself. I didn't know. They opened the basket and all of a sudden they said, we need you to shoot uh, watermelon, we need you to shoot cauliflower and all these different kinds of things. And I, I didn't think I was going to make any of them, but I did. So uh, that was a fun experience for me. But uh, in the meantime, I'll stick with just, the ba just a normal basketball because that's what I'm best at.